Also tonight, a big win for religious freedom fighters in America. Today, the Trump administration scaled back a key part of Obamacare that insisted that many employers provide coverage for birth control. The move met with widespread praise on the right and a lawsuit from the ACLU. Joining us now, Family Research Council President Tony Perkins, who advised the president on these issues, and Jessica Tarlov, Bustle.com Senior Director of Research and a Fox News contributor. Welcome uh, to both of you. Good to have you here tonight. Um, Tony, let me start with you. Um, obviously, this is a big win for people from your way of thinking on this and those who want to protect religious freedom. It's a huge win. This is uh, this day, I think, combined with the DOJ guidance on religious liberty will, could be considered as the religious armistice day, the day that the federal government's attack on the little sisters of the poor and the people of faith uh, ceased in this country after eight years of constant attack by the Obama administration. So this is a significant turn in the approach of our federal government to respecting religious liberty. So, Jessica, that, you know, the question comes down to this, you know, should private entities have to cover contraceptive if it goes against their religious beliefs? Well, if it's in violation of the Equal Protection Clause, which is what the ACLU suit alleges and what I believe, then they should, absolutely should have to cover it. What the Trump administration has done, though, is actually go beyond what religious freedom fighters usually do. And they've added a clause that you can also reject providing contraception uh, based upon moral conviction. But there is no explanation whatsoever as to what moral conviction means there. We have Tony Perkins here. Maybe he can explain that to me. But what it seems to be is that the Trump administration, just like with the Muslim ban, is going to face a number of lawsuits on this issue, going to have a lot of angry Americans who rely on that health care. You there are hundreds of thousands of women who get it through Obamacare, 62 million women nationwide right now who are covered. And there was something else in the guidance that I found interesting. It said that having access to contraception promoted risky sexual behavior. But that has nothing to do with religion. We shouldn't be legislating about what people do in their private time. That is no one's right, business let's give Tony but their own. To respond. Tony? Well, the mandate to begin with had nothing to do with contraceptives. The the mandate had to do with subjecting religious beliefs to a government ideology. And look, we're we're, we're talking about a, a an order, a direction that is in keeping with the Supreme Court's ruling in the Hobby Lobby case, just extending this to nonprofits. You know, it's it's nonsensical that the Little Sisters of the Poor, a group of Catholic nuns who care for the for the impoverished, that they would have to provide for contraceptive in their health care. And we're talking about contraception that can be can act as abortifacients. Look, it's not about cost. If the government really wanted to provide contraception, they could, but they could do it, as the court said, in a way that does not trample upon the religious freedom of mm -hmm. Americans and of nonprofit religious organizations. Yeah, so it's separating the, the question of whether or not, of, of how people want to obtain them. Of course, anyone in this country is free to obtain Absolutely. birth control any day of the week. Anybody can do that. The question is whether or not a private corporation or a private entity, Jessica, should have, be, be instructed by the government in terms of how they should provide for their employees. So why, you know, in any way, why would you want to step on their right to provide in the way that, that they choose to do so? That, that's because their they're right. they're discriminating against women in this case. What Obamacare did is that they made contraceptives part of a woman's right to health care, just like men have their pills and their things. That but they this is assuming with. that you're okay with the government sort well, of being the instructor is, and the, de the decider about who Obamacare, gets what in this right? country. I mean, and obviously I know that, uh, Mr. Perkins is not a fan of Obamacare more generally. That's what it comes down to. That's, I would, that's correct. Well, we have that. Um, I don't think, I don't no. think, that, well, I, no, we, we, we have it because the Senate has not acted, but I don't think it's the government's role. I mean, look, drinking but, wine is actually good for your heart. So, so should we mandate that the government provide every, uh, or make employers buy wine for all of their employees because it's good a, for them? Look, you can have access to this. We're talking about three or four cappuccinos a month will cover the cost that, of contraception. That is unfair. That is should unfair to force, lower and middle income income women who rely on getting this as a government subsidy. I would also the, ask the about the conditions that are way. treated by contraceptives. What about endometriosis? What about that? I mean, the, the birth control is not only just without... for contraception. The government can provide it if they feel that this is essential through another means without trampling without the company to freedom. do it. Just like All with right, Planned Parenthood, leave it there, they you guys. say you we're going to open up clinics for you, and they don't do it. You guys. Great points on both sides. Thank you very much Thanks, for being Martha. here tonight. Jessica and Tony Perkins, as always, good to have both of you with us. Thank you.